feel like talking, but I guess I'll get started anyway. This is the latest attempt to make improvements, and I took an old circuit that had eight starter coils and two main coils, um, and it kind of ignore these two sources. I only need one. I put them in to represent the two aerials that act as switches in Tesla's project box of his Pierce Arrow from 1931. Um, the switches um, act as aerials at the same time, and I'm not still clear how they operate, why there are two of them. Um, unless there's something they surround on either side so that they act as aerials at the same time they also act as switches so my guess is um, well they might be in series surrounding something here I have them in parallel they're not surrounding anything because they come with their own sine wave generator it's a little different here um, because the little aerial on top is just a drawing it doesn't do anything <coughs> he just represents an aerial you know symbolically um, so I think you know only one sine wave generator is needed and it's putting out each one is putting out uh, four gigahertz one microvolt um, now the funny thing is I tried to put in a full bridge rectifier here full wave um, you know, to convert AC to DC. And I thought I was going to do something over here on the DC output, and I ended up doing nothing but putting a capacitor at 11 nanofarads. 11 seemed to be the optimal for um, the size of what looks like a surge, but is not really... Well, it looks like an infinite surge, but it's not really an infinite surge. It is a surge. And it's, and it's both in the positive and negative direction, above and below the midline of the oscilloscope tracings. But what it does, if you monkey with this, what you'll find is that it changes both the amplitude and the frequency of uh, what is a surge that goes to a certain limit and then collapses and is followed by the next. So they have a certain amplitude and a certain frequency just based on the parameter of this capacitor that regulates them. And these are surges that have to do with, you know, the whole circuit. Um, let's see what else. So that's what I found out by lowering this capacitance downwards. I was able to get smaller amplitude at a higher frequency of incidence. Um, here I have it at this, the lowest frequency of incidence but the highest amplitude so much so that if I try to run this I have it set at um, one microsecond uh, duration to run the analysis um, I don't get to see the top of the amplitude of the surge so I don't get to see its frequency either so it's something uh, less frequent than one microsecond. Um, and it takes a lot of space up on the hard drive to run the simulation. Um, the data file is humongous. <coughs> I think it's, um, what is it, one gigabyte? Let's see if we can find it. Uh, I don't see it here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Well, the last one was five point something six, five point six and a half gigabytes. So let's see, this is kilobytes, mega, yeah, five point six and a half gigabyte. So that was the size of the, um, and that's the name of the file. So I, I started using the high bandpass motor transformer version nine B, and then I modified it, and I came up with the fifteenth version after all the modifications. So this capacitor will regulate the surges, but we still need to regulate the um, current. And I took out all the other components because they were superfluous. They didn't do anything. 
Um, what really matters is this resistor on the rotor, on the squirrel cage rotor. And if I want the volts to have a relationship with a certain relationship with the amps, such that if it could surge to 345 volts, the amps will be 206, then it's a value that is similar to, but not the same as, 1.67 ohms of resistance. If you take 345 and divide by 206, you get something slightly different than this. But I chose this because it's close enough. Um, the other weird thing about this is that, uh, let's see, so I've got eight starter coils and two main coils on the armature coupling that has 99% coupling coefficient. And then I have two relationships with the rotor, one for the L1 and one for the L2, because those are the only ones that have any voltage to speak of. So they're the only ones to have a relationship with. But 10% is exactly the coupling coefficient the rotor has to have with each of the bifiler windings, the L1 and the L2. If it's 11 or 9, it won't surge. This is the amazing thing about this. So you have to have an, an exact coupling coefficient of 10 um, percent between the rotor and each of the bifiler uh, voltage coils, the main coils. And you have to have this AC to DC um, full bridge rectification involving four generic diodes and then a regulating capacitor to re regulate the peaks, the frequency and amplitude of the peaks, because, you know, despite the fact that, in theory, I, I just assumed that this is supposed to be DC, right? The current comes out here and goes in here in one direction, going downwards across this capacitor, but that's not what happens um, on the capacitor, and it's not what happens over here either it ends up being a surge. A surge that surges in both directions, both positive and negative. Um, sometimes it it only goes in one direction, in the positive direction or in the negative direction. Actually, the rotor, the amp, the current surges in a positive direction and the voltage surges in a negative direction. So. In terms of polarity, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I'm a little mixed up and turned around. There's not too many components to this circuit. Um, it's quite simple. Let's see if I can find a uh, this, the uh, tracing. Here it is. So there's the tracing. So there the the red is the current. So it's surging upwards in a positive direction, and the voltage is surging downwards in a negative direction. Um, what else? And then it looks like, uh, let's see, we've got the same, well, I can just do it. Uh, let's see if I just do it here. Um... Okay, so we'll get the voltage. Uh, where are you, voltage? So there's the voltage. And then let's get the current. Now this is not RMS. This is just the raw data. So let's get the um, peak of the amperage. So the peak of the amperage here is, um, if I maybe put on my glasses, <laughs> all right, what, is, what does it say with my glasses? 93.5 milliamps. Okay, and then if we do that 156.13 millivolts in the negative so 
that's as far as I was able to take it. If I take it any further, weird things happen. Uh, let's see. If I took it just slightly longer, like two microseconds. So, you know, you're up on your own if you want to take it any further. I wouldn't be able to do that. Oh, my God. Whoops. That was my problem. I went too far with it. When I went to 10, it was a big mistake. Unbelievable. So you don't have to go very far. This is what I get for making videos. I do a much better job. <laughs> oh my god. All right. All right, so what do we got here? We got one point oh eight kiloamps and one point eight oh eight. negative kilovolts. So let's take uh, the proportion. 1.808 divided by 1.082 1. 1.0 Eight two, and that's the real, ooh see one point six seven pretty close. Yeah, so if we take that and we multiply it against two hundred and six amps, we get three hundred and forty four point two volts. Pretty close. So um, that's very interesting. So I need so the surge has to be cut off prior to two microamps, or excuse me, two uh, microseconds. So, let's see. I might as well stop this video and find out what is the precise time frame. Um, well, before I do, Wait a minute. <laughs> Let me finish what I was doing. So two was went too far, but it was pretty close. So let's say 1.9 because it's an exponential surge. It's hard to tell. Um, the thing I want to bring up is that the way to regulate this, since I don't know how to regulate in a simple way, is to have a two-tiered uh, pulse timing arrangement with switches. So the third tier gives you the frequency that you want, in this case 4 giga cycles. And then the next timer above it, operating two switches, um, operates the... Well, let's see if I can remember this. The frequency. Uh, no, the duty cycle. Right, the duty cycle. So the next one above, so if we had two switches, at, uh, one on either side, and then another timer with a square wave operating the switches, this one, th the next tier up, operates um, the frequency of how often these, uh, the power from this opens and closes. Um, and then the one above that operating that one uh, oh no, I got it backwards. No, this one is the duty cycle. And then the topmost one is the frequency of the duty cycle. Uh, so you cascade them, basically. You cascade the pulses, and each one switches on and off the one below it. Um, and that's how to get what you want. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's nice to know. <laughs> 
<clears throat> it's best I do this all in one recording anyway. So I could just go by voltage here. Yeah, that's too much. Uh, let's see. So bring it down a bit. Whoopsie, I didn't bring it down. How about that? I was so close to the goal and I didn't even know it. So this is a surge that peaks at a, at a point much greater than what we want, which means you could get more power out of this if you want to, to like run a truck or something. Um, no harm there. You just have to create your own frequency of the pulse. So here we're pretty close to the goal because we got 300 volts in the negative direction. So I just have to make it a little bit longer. 1.8. Uh, let's see. How about 3? 1.83. So I'm using the transient duration as my uh, frequency or duty cycle? No, the duty cycle, I think. Right, the duty cycle. Now, if these are surges, you may want to do it a little higher since there'll be breaks in between. Oh, that's pretty good. 373, that's pretty close. So it's something less than 1.83. Let's see, it would be two, seven, let's say. Wow, so you can see how fast this thing surges. And I, tr I tried to s my best to slow it down. Yeah, in the past, I was dealing in nanoseconds. Now I'm dealing in microseconds. Yeah, I think it was like three dozen nanoseconds. So now I'm less than two microseconds. Not, not bad. <laughs> a little improvement. <laughs> not much, but a little bit. Okay, what do we got here? 363, yeah, it's too high. Let's see. This is exciting. All right, too high, so I got to bring it down. What do we got? 359. Ooh, that's very close. Huh. So each situation, you know, calls for your own adjustment because your situation may be different when you go to build the thing. I mean, I think Spice is a safe enough simulator to um, pre design your circuit, you know, test and run each design and you know, design as you test it. So when it comes time to build it, you have a pretty good idea of what to put out. Oh, 356, that didn't go down very much. Well, that's weird. Well, it's pretty close to 345. I'm not there yet, obviously. Hmm. 
353. Oh my god, I'm really going down gr gradually. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Well, I'll take a guess. Three forty three, that's pretty close. Three forty three point four. Wow. Well, let's see if two will do it. If I go over. Yeah, I went over. So it's something less than 3. Yeah, but it's closer this way. So 322 is pretty close. Wow. So we add in the current. Oh, it may not do it, as I recall. Yeah, it's going to screw up. Okay. <laughs> Whoopsie. Oh no, it didn't screw up. Okay, so we go get the amps. 207.5. So there you go. So I got a perfect match here. So that's what you do. <laughs> um, how about that? Uh, let's see. Well, um, <laughs> I don't know if you like watching me do this or not. This is how I composite together the two um, images. It's in the wrong place. Hmm. Oh, that is in the wrong place.
Yeah, it's the wrong place. Oh dear. Maybe I don't need to. Oh, it just shows. Hmm. Yeah, that's it's not showing anything useful. Huh. a little better. Yeah, but it's a little higher though. Oh, I know what I gotta do. I gotta get rid of that. There we go. So this one is um, 207 and a half. And this one is Three forty six six two five. Three forty six six two five. Where's my cursor? Okay, that does it. So I'll have to add text and do a schematic for this thing because it's um, 
it lacks explanation as to what's behind it if I do a screenshot. But at least I did, I managed to do these. I managed to do the um, tracings. That was the hard thing I couldn't do yes last night because I was just, I guess I was just too tired. But you see the data file has gotten to be 246 megabytes. Not bad. It could be worse. It could be very worse. <laughs> there we go. So now we know the amps and the volts. Um, I don't know if I should have done RMS. I'm not, I'm not too interested really at the moment. Um, but we got our proportional relationship and that's important. And I guess, um, so let's see, is there anything else to be said about this? Uh, I guess not. Yeah, so the AC input on one side goes to the ground plane, and the AC input on the other side goes to the bridge, the Y bridge, between the two bifilar windings on the main coil. Um, maybe I should change this back to just one. I think I'm going to change this back to just one, because this looks kind of ridiculous. Yeah, I'm going to change the schematic. I'm going to take out... this and this and so this becomes that one inch rod and then if I do the analysis whoops darn if I do the analysis it should give me the same result See if it does. 346, 625, yep, same voltage. So, yeah, you only need one anyway. Powering this thing. Um, you know, if they're two, then it changes things if they're in parallel or in series. You either get current doubling or voltage doubling. Um, voltage doubling if they're in series current doubling if they're in parallel. Um, although, oh, oh, that's right. Oh my god, I don't think I can change it. I have it geared f shoot. <laughs> Oops. I forgot about that. Oh shoot, <laughs> it's not ready yet. Uh, is that too high or too... Oh, it's the same as before. What? Oh my god. Two hundred and seven point five six. I'll be damned. It made no difference whatsoever. Go figure. Ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> so, you can get by with only one. How nice. So there, I made a good change. I simplified the circuit even better, even more so. Um... So now I just have to put in explanatory text um, if I think I need it. And I think I do, maybe a little. Uh, yeah, 
I can talk about this capacitor here, which should be changed to C1 because there's only one capacitor. That's right. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, that concludes this uh, video. Hope you enjoyed it.